Everything is built on layers of abstraction, but how well do you understand those abstractions for the tools, libraries, and frameworks you're using? Everything comes with trade-offs, and if you understand the underlying implementation, you'll be able to make better decisions. As an example, I recently posted a video where I was making a database call with Entity Framework Core, and it was originally doing a first or default. I changed this to do a single or default. Then came out the comments that said, no, really, you should be using first or default for performance reasons. Well, not so fast. That's why understanding the abstraction, the underlying implementation being used, has trade-offs. Is it more performant? Well, maybe not. Follow along. Let me explain the trade-offs here around performance, potentially, and being explicit. I'd like to thank Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. So here is the example code similar that I was showing, where we have a query handler, it's using a DB context here, and we're selecting one individual order. That's the purpose of this query, is to return an order. So we can see here that we have our DB set of orders, and I'm querying specifically for that one individual order. And to caveat this, as you'd expect, this order ID is our primary key, and that's important. So this code originally was doing first or default async, and I changed this to single or default async. And this is where the comments came out saying that first or default async, in general, is faster because you only have to fetch the first record. Now, I understand where these comments come from, that first or default would be faster if you're using an in-memory collection, because if you call single or single or default, Ultimately, it needs to confirm that whatever your criteria of your aware of that condition, that there's not more than one record that exists in that collection. There's not more than one item that meets that criteria. So yes, you have to go through the entire collection. This makes sense why first would be faster. But there's two problems with this. The first being is your DB set isn't an in-memory collection. You're using your underlying database provider to convert link to SQL, which is ultimately gonna return the data required from that statement. The second is you're choosing trade-offs of what you assume to be better performance and the trade-off of being explicit in masking data issues. So to illustrate this better, I've set up MySQL in a local container. I've added this orders table, it's really small, but I've added a bunch of dummy data, so I have about a million records here. Then what I've done is I've created this test DB context that has my order DB set in it. And what I'm doing is I'm also logging the output of the generated SQL to the console so we can see what is it actually generating. So I have a couple just tests here just to execute. The first one I'm executing is single. And then we should, when I ran this, we can see what the output was. So if I look at the console, we can see this is the select statement that the single async generated. It's calling select from our orders, where our criteria of order ID, and it's calling a limit two. Now this limit two makes sense because it's only gonna return two records for that query. And that's because with single, we wanna confirm that there's only one record. So if two records come back, that's when our singular async is gonna throw saying there's more than one record. So this means at worst, your database is gonna return two records when you're expecting one. And that's the key part about this is expectations is that you're calling single because you expect there to be only one record. This is a good thing if it throws because you otherwise would be masking bad data. If you're writing code that has the expectation where there should only be one order with this order ID and there's two, well, you got a lot bigger problems about where this data is being created. So I don't wanna mask with first for the performance implications. But let's jump back to that, because really, are there performance implications? So let's jump back to the code. I've executed first so we can see what first or async actually produces in SQL. And it looks very similar. It's the same type of select statement, except now we're doing a limit one. And this makes sense because we don't need to care if there's more than one record. That's why we're doing first. But again, we're not really being explicit. We're just saying, give me the first one, even though we know in this case based on our schema, because it's the primary key, there shouldn't be more than one. The thing is, is not everything is gonna be able to be constrained at the database level for uniqueness. You will have to do this at a code level. So calling first, again, just masks the problem. So let's look at the database call because we also have the assumption still 
that first is faster, is it? So let's look at the execution plan of these two queries. Our single was doing a limit two, our first is doing a limit one. If I execute both of these to see what the plans are, we can see single is using our possible key as the primary. That's actually the one it's using. And as you could expect, the first is doing the exact same thing. So what I've also done is so the execution plans are identical. Again, because we're using the primary key. I've also created a little benchmark here where I have single or first to see what the differences are. And I'm just calling single async and first async. What do you think the differences are? If I actually run this, and what I did is we can see the results here, is that our mean for single and our uh, mean for first are almost identical. Now, is first faster? Yes, pretty much every one that I've run, it's slightly, minorly faster. But is that the trade-off that you're willing to make? And the answer may be yes. We need to squeeze out performance anywhere we can, and we're fine with that trade-off. So as long, again, as you understand what the trade-off was. There's this general kind of rule of thumb or best practice I keep seeing, hence the comments of, but you should use first. Well, not really. If your performance is negligible between calling first or single against your database provider, depending what your query is, I would prefer in those particular circumstances to be calling single, so I don't potentially mask any type of data issues. Like I said, it's not always that your database is gonna have this constraint where it can enforce uniqueness. You're gonna have some places in code where you're gonna have to enforce it when it's getting inserted. And in those places, when you're returning the data is when you're gonna expose that you have data issues. Again, the whole point of this video was to understand the abstractions, but the underlying implementation below it. If you understand abstractions, but also the implementations behind those, you can make better decisions about trade-offs, not to mention troubleshooting and understanding what's really happening with the tools, libraries, and frameworks that you're using. If you found this video helpful and you want to talk with other software developers about topics like this, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server. Check the link in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment, and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.